Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to get creative and have a lot of fun with colourful clay masks. I'm also incorporating customization, personalization and minimally disruptive formulations into this one presentation so that you can see how easy it is to get creative with your formulations, ensure efficacy and use the one base across a whole range. Clay masks are one of the most popular cosmetic items because customers can pick and choose to suit their needs and there's nothing like bringing home a salon experience and enjoying it for yourself in the comfort and privacy of your own home. You can also tailor make and manipulate your mask formulas to create a range of products specific to different consumer needs. I'm going to show you how easy it is in this video and give you five ideas to take away. Let me show you how. So before we look at some concepts that you can take and use as they are or manipulate to suit your own company philosophies, I want to talk you through the minimally disruptive formulation base that I've created first. Now the reason I've done this is so that you can use the same materials across all the range so you can achieve good economies of scale even if you're a small producer. And because I'm going to be adding all sorts of actives, iron oxide, zinc oxide possibly, charcoal, clays, because I'm going to be adding so many different materials to this base I need to make sure it's going to tolerate all sorts of actives, all sorts of colorants and whatever the required pH may need to be. So in this particular base formulation I have started by using 10% glycerin. Glycerin is an unsung hero in a lot of personal care formulations. It's an osmolite so it will help draw the actives into the epidermis so that you can get good results. It's also a humectant which means it will add suppleness to the skin without greasiness. So skin will feel more moisturized and look more supple and regenerated after application. I've kept the lipid content of this formula low so that you can create wash off masks or make them leave on masks that just get wiped away with a tissue gently after application. That's also why I've only used inorganic colorants in the bases so that their large particle size won't cause any potential irritancy. They have less regulation restrictions so you could formulate the same product for multiple countries. And I'm not using FDNCs so you don't need to worry about batch certification or potential allergies in your end user. I am using a very special polymer in this formula, one you've probably seen me use before. It's my go-to polymer to stabilize formulas even when they're going to be in very challenging environments and that's Sepimax Zen. Now I've used the Sepimax Zen because it will tolerate all sorts of electrolytes and charge, meaning that I can add all sorts of actives or colorants uh, or oxides into this base and it won't destabilize the formula. I've also used a really reliable non-ionic high HLB emulsifying wax to build body and structure to my cream. You can still see it's very glossy, it has got a great structure to it so it's going to stabilize the emulsion and of course the polymer and the emulsifier that I've used will help stabilize any of the clays, pigments or any other materials I might add to this base formulation. Finally, I've used a preservative that will be, provide broad spectrum preservation over a very large pH range. So again, if I need to manipulate this formulation to accommodate my clays, my colorants or my actives, it will still be effective. Now, when you incorporate your clays and colorants into the formula, you are best to add them into the oily phase and this is so that they wet out and disperse easily in the finished product. If I just added clays to this white base it would take a lot of mixing, they'd tend to clump up, agglomerate, it would take a lot of processing and they probably wouldn't be distributed evenly. So even though I've shown you a base product it's important that you follow the 
a method that I've provided with each of these formulation examples so that you can incorporate your clays, your colorants, and even your actives at the right stage of processing. And I've made notes in the formulas. Of course, if you change the colorants, you would still put them into the oil phase. If you change your actives, check if they have any pH compatibility issues, and also check that temperature of addition to make sure you're not inactivating your active before it's even had a chance to work. So let me talk you through some of the concepts I've created to help stimulate your idea generation. The first one I'm going to look at is this green one here. Now I've just used chromium oxide green with kaolin to color it. And in this one, I've used a special active called Ectoin. This particular Ectoin is really great at cell regeneration, cell protection. So I've gone with a bit of a green detox, regenerate, protect type theme in this particular product concept. The blue mask. In this one, I have used ultramarines with kaolin to achieve that color. And in this one, I'm talking about hydration. The blue, of course, symbolizing a more hydrated impact on the skin. The active I've chosen for this product is a Quoxel, which has fantastic hydration efficacy data, even after eight hours of use, but excellent desquamation results after 30 days of use. So it's a highly effective active that will provide results even from the first application. I have of course got charcoal. What kind of a colorful clay mask range would it be without some charcoal? Now this one of course can absorb a lot of oil and sebum from the skin. It can also absorb any toxins that you secrete through sweat. So it provides a really great detox story and of course it's a good reliable consumers look for as part of a colorful clay range. This product here, I've actually colored using kaolin and some red iron oxide. I've got a lantern in here for a sensitive skin story. But you could of course also use calamine as your powders and companion that with a lantern. And this one here, I've used one of my personal favorites for anti-aging. So I've combined ultramarine pink with kaolin and ran liftonin expert for smart collagen management. It's a fantastic anti-wrinkle collagen building active that can be used in these formulas really easily. So they're just some concepts you can play with, but of course you can get creative. You can use colorful clays instead of combining kaolin and iron oxides. I've done that just to show you how we can create different colors if we can't obtain certain clays. I've incorporated a variety of actives for product story and I've made a base product with glycerin to help with that humectancy as well. In this formula, I also allowed 5% across all of these different actives and clay combinations. So it was the same base formula, but remember to process it properly so that you can get your clays, colorants or powders into the formula easily without agglomeration and lumps. And that's how it's done. So you can give your consumer a personalized experience. They can mix and match with good efficacy and results so that they can get the products they're looking for specific to what their skin needs. Happy formulating.